Well, hello! My name is Vid, and this is a tutorial on how to set up a modded Minecraft client with Fabric to use to connect to vanilla servers like Hermitcraft, Igniter SMP, or any other vanilla single player or multiplayer world or server. Now I know what you're thinking, a modded client to connect to vanilla servers? Well, the mods we're gonna use are client side only, which means they only run on your computer and not on the server, and they won't change the vanilla feel of the game. These are mods like Mini HUD, which provide a mini F3-like display in the top left corner of your screen, or Lightmatica, which you can use to place a schematic in the world to help you build. I'm gonna show you how to create a new Minecraft instance with its own directory of files, and that's gonna make it easy to switch from one version of Minecraft to another. Today, I'm going to be installing Fabric for Minecraft 1.20.1, but this same process can be used for any version of Minecraft. We're going to start by downloading Fabric, and you can start by just going to Google and typing in Fabric and hit enter. And hopefully, you should end up with FabricMC.net, and that is the home of the Fabric Mod development tool chain, and just click on that. So here we go. To install Fabric, you need the Fabric Loader, which you can download here. You're gonna click on that button. And once the page loads, you're gonna see this great big button to download for Windows. Now, if you're not using Windows, uh, unfortunately, I'm using a Windows machine and I can't show you the uh, alternate method, but it should be very similar for any other operating system. I'm just gonna show you the Windows install right now and you can kind of infer from that how to do this. It's pretty straightforward. So click the button and you're just gonna to wanna to find a place to download your Fabric installer. I'm just gonna save that in my downloads folder. When that's done installing, you can click on this to actually run the installer. And you're going to get a little window that looks like this. This is where you're actually going to install Fabric. Now choose the version of Minecraft that you want to use. So in my case, I'm going to be using 1.20.1. Make sure I'm set on client up here because that's what we're installing, just the client version. Uh, the loader version will just default to whatever the newest is. So you probably don't have to touch that. And then your install location, make sure you use the default Minecraft folder here. Now, if you have Minecraft installed in a, a couple other folders, and that's actually something we're going to do today, uh, don't choose a, a different version of Minecraft. You need to use the root Minecraft folder. So just click the install button. Now Fabric's going to run through a bunch of different library installs and create a brand new profile for you that we'll use to select inside of Minecraft for creating a new instance. When it's done installing, you're going to see a little pop-up. Fabric Loader has been successfully installed, but many mods do require you to put the Fabric API into the mods folder. So we are going to have to download the Fabric API as well. So let's just click that little link. That's going to bring us over to a CurseForge page, and we're going to scroll down until we see on the right-hand side the 1.20.1. That's the same matching version we're going to use. Just click on that. In this case, it's a beta release for 1.20.1. That's what this little B means over here. Normally, you'll want to download a release version, but I think in this case, it's going to be okay. This was updated very recently, so I think this is probably the one to use. To download it, you just click on the file, and then you're going to click on this download button up here. Now, I've created created a new directory called mods 1.20.1 that I'm just going to put on my desktop for now and I'm going to use this to store all of the mod files that I download. So just save that there. The next thing we need to do is navigate to our app data directory and find our Minecraft folder. So in order to do that, just open up a brand new explorer window and we're going to click in this field right here and we're going to type in percent app data percent and then hit enter, and that's gonna bring us directly to the app data roaming inside of our user folder. We're gonna scroll down until we see Minecraft. Actually, in my case, it's at the very top. So dot Minecraft is the folder that we are interested in. Now, this is a large folder, but in order to make this work really well, we're actually gonna make a copy of this folder. And you can actually see I have a copy of this folder from when I installed 1.19.3 a little while ago. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna click on this folder, right click, we're gonna to go to copy, and then out here, right click and paste, and that's gonna make a total copy of that folder, and it is gonna take a minute or two, so let's just wait for that. Now, once your copy is finished, you're going to see this Minecraft copy directory at the bottom of the screen. And it's very important that we name this folder properly. So I'm going to right click on this and go to rename. And I have a very particular naming scheme that I like to use. I like to use Minecraft underscore YT for YouTube, then a dash. Now the date, so in this case, it's 2023 and the month is 06. And then we're going to type a underscore 
And now the version of Minecraft uh, with underscores. So one underscore 20 underscore one. And again, this is just my naming scheme. You can name your folder anything you want, but this is just how I like to do it. So hit enter and that's gonna pop it up to the top of the screen. And now we can go into that folder because we've got some things that we don't need in here. Now it's very important that you're in the directory that you just made and not the brute Minecraft folder because we're gonna be deleting some important files and I don't wanna break your Minecraft install. So let's go to a folder called backups and you can delete anything that's in there. Then we'll come back out. We'll go into lib no, not libraries, logs, and uh, all of this stuff. Everything in this whole folder, we don't need it. We can just highlight it all and delete it. Then we can go back out to the mods folder. And if you've got anything in the mods folder, you can delete that. We can go down to resource packs and anything you've got in that folder, you can delete. We can go to the saves folder and anything that you've got in here, you can delete. That's a lot of uh, saved space right there. You can go into the screenshots directory and the same thing, delete that. You can go into server resource packs and delete anything there. And you can go into the versions directory. This is a big one because this one stores every version of Minecraft that you have ever played. I'm gonna highlight all the way down to the 1.19 and just get rid of everything before that. And then anything after Minecraft 1.20.1, so all these RC1, which is the release candidate, the pre-releases and everything, we can get rid of all of this stuff all the way back down to the very last one. Do you see where it says Fabric Loader 1.20.1? We wanna keep that because that's what we just installed. So let's get rid of everything else. And just to be clear, these are the only things that should now be in your versions folder. So I've got 1.20 which I'm not even sure I need, but I'm gonna keep it there because it's only 20 meg, it's pretty small. 1.20.1, which we definitely need, and the fabric loader for 1.20.1. Back in the main folder now, all of this other stuff we can safely ignore. It's all relatively small and shouldn't get in our way. And now it's time to actually run Minecraft. So let's pull up, open the Minecraft launcher and we're gonna go up to installations up here. We're gonna click on new installation and we're gonna name this installation something like Minecraft 1.20.1. Uh, um, I'm gonna use YouTube modded because I know this is the modded one that I'm gonna use here. Now under version, I'm gonna choose the fabric release, which is this one, release fabric loader 1.20.1. It's important that you make sure you choose 1.20.1 and fabric loader. That's gonna make sure we load our modded client. For game directory, we're gonna browse and we're gonna scroll down and make sure we select that brand new folder we created. So here we go, this is the 2023-06-120.1 folder and click OK. And then we're gonna click on more options here. We're gonna leave the Java executable as is, but over here under the JVM arguments, we do need to allocate more RAM because a modded client does take more RAM. You're gonna update this very first little command argument right here where it says XMX2G. So we're gonna change this to to something else and it's important that you know what to change it to. Usually what you're gonna do is set this to about one half to two thirds of the amount of RAM that you have in your computer to spare to Minecraft. Now I know I have a lot of RAM in my system. I have 32 gigs of RAM. So I'm gonna allocate 24 gigs of RAM to Minecraft. That's two thirds of the RAM. If you have eight gigs of RAM in your system, you can allocate six. If you only have four gigs of RAM in your system, you can allocate three. If you have 16 gigs of RAM in your system, you can safely allocate 12, something like that. So it's, you know, two thirds, three quarters, a half, whatever you can spare. Uh, and that should work just fine. So once you've updated that command argument, you're gonna click the create button and that's gonna create your brand new instance. And that should be here in this list somewhere. There it is right here near the bottom of the screen. You know what, I think I wanna change that name to actually make it a little bit more meaningful for me. So I'm gonna edit that instance one more time and I'm just gonna add the date here. This was June 2023 that I'm actually doing the install and save. Now back to this screen right here, let's go ahead and just click the play button. It's gonna give you a warning about, are you sure you wanna play this? It's modded uh, and it might be scary, don't worry about it. This is totally safe. Click I understand the risks, don't warn me again and click play. And now we just have to wait a few seconds while Minecraft downloads and installs the version that we're gonna be playing.
And when it's done loading, you should be taken to your beautiful new Minecraft loading screen. And there is one quick thing that you're going to want to take note of in the very bottom left hand corner here. It says the version. So in my case, Minecraft 1.20.1, but it also says fabric and modded. If you don't have that, then you must have missed some sort of step because we need to make sure that we're running the modded version of Minecraft here. So once you're sure you're running the modded version of Minecraft, you can go ahead and click quit game because there's more work to do. The next part of the process is to install some mods. Now there are two ways to do this. Way number one is to manually install all your mods and I'm going to be going through that really quickly first. But if you have a mod pack of mods, then uh, you're going to want to skip through uh, the very first part because you don't need to install the mods manually. I'm going to do that. Uh, in a minute. So just bear with me while I install one mod and then uh, then we'll get to the, the mod pack part. So let's install a mod like Mini HUD. I'm just going to go to Google and search for Mini HUD. The very first one that pops up is the Mini HUD on Minecraft mods link. There you go. We're going to uh, go over to the files section here and we're going to make sure that we have the version of Mini HUD that we need. So Mini HUD fabric 1.20 1.1, yeah, that's what we need. So we click on that, we click on download, and we're just gonna save that in the same place that we saved our other mods. And that's gonna be this folder right here. So we'll save that. Now, if I just go back to the description of Mini HUD, if you scroll down a little bit here, you'll actually see that Mini HUD actually requires the Malib library mod as well. So we're just gonna click on that and make sure that we also have the lib mod. And this one's exactly the same. We just go to files. We make sure that we select the one that says fabric 1.20.1. That's what we want. We're going to download that and put that in the exact same folder. Now, if we take a look at this folder, you'll see we now have three mods here. We have the fabric API that we downloaded at the very beginning. We have mini HUD and we have the Matlib fabric library that mini HUD requires. And these mods will be enough to get started with modded Minecraft. So what we need to do, though, is move them into the right folder. So I'm just going to highlight them all. I'm going to right click and go copy. And now I need to go back to my app data directory. So I'm going to click in this folder right here. I'm going to do the percent app data percent hit enter and I'm going to be brought back to my roaming folder make sure I select the 1.20.1 folder now we're going to go down to mods and we're going to click into that folder and we're going to right click and paste all of the mods that we have and now we're ready to actually try running our Minecraft modded install so when the Minecraft Java launcher loads up, we're just going to come on down here and make sure that we select the right version of Minecraft. So in this case, we want Minecraft 1.20.1 and we want that modded version that we created. So let's select that and we're going to click play. Now it's just going to take a couple seconds for Minecraft to download and install all of the required files and then we should boot into Minecraft proper. And once Minecraft loads, you can look down in the bottom left hand corner and see Minecraft 1.20.1 fabric modded. So we know we are in our new modded client. Let's go ahead and create a brand new world and just see if we can actually get into the whole modded scenario. So I'm just creating a brand new world here. And in a moment that is going to open. And here we are inside of our brand new modded vanilla Minecraft world. And it looks like a cool one. But how do we know we're actually in a modded world? Well, we can start by opening up the one mod that we installed, which is Mini HUD. We can press the H key to open Mini HUD. And if you look in the, uh, well, it says right there that the Minecraft uh, Mini HUD mod is open. And in the top left corner, you can see very, very tiny that we do have the date, the time, the coordinates and the default install behavior of mini HUD. Now, thank you for being patient. If you have a mod pack, let's do the mod pack install instead. So let's exit out of Minecraft and drop back to our app data folder. So back in our mods folder of our regular modded Minecraft folder that we created here, um, I actually have a mod pack. So I'm just going to copy and paste this guy in right over here. And now, I have this zip file. Now what I can do is delete all of the other files that are in this folder because I don't need anything. Everything's going to be inside of this mods folder, but I do need to unzip the folder. So I'm going to right click, go to extract all, 
And then you see how it says it wants to create it inside of a new folder. I'm just going to clear out that extra folder just to make sure it just saves in the mods folder. I don't, I'm not sure if you need to have an extra slash at the end of that, but I'm gonna put one anyway, click extract. And hopefully, there we go, all of our mods are now in this folder. We can actually delete the original zip folder as well. So let's delete that. You can see I now have 17 mods installed in this folder and we're ready to run Minecraft one more time. And back in Minecraft for the last time. Now, if we look down in the bottom left-hand corner, we again see we're at Minecraft 1.20.1 fabric, but this time, because of one of the mods I have installed, I can actually see that I have 74 mods installed. And uh, all those mods came in just with a few files that I actually loaded from my mod pack. But we're ready to create a brand new single player world and uh, jump right into modded Minecraft. And here we are, you can see we have our mini HUD display in the top corner. And if I uh, try some of my other mods like uh, Tweakaroo, wow, you can see all the mod menu stuff is coming up. And yeah, we've got all kinds of really good stuff loaded. That is gonna do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this is going to get you started in a wonderful way of uh, adding a modded client so that you can actually use some of the cool mods like Lightmatica and Mini HUD and Tweakaroo and, uh, and neat stuff in your vanilla world just to help you with building and help you with content creation and all of that stuff. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.